kind of give us your overall perspective of the status of the industry and how, you know, what the opportunities and vulnerabilities are uh, to innovation? Sure. Um, well, I, I think like most industries, we're going through very significant change. Obviously, technology is driving a great deal of that. But you know, if you look at us on face value, we're, we're, we're an industry that doesn't deliver particularly well from a cost standpoint. If you look at our distribution costs, they're very high. So I think like industries, or any other industry with very high distribution costs, costs it's open for disruption. Right. You know, which is part of the reason why I'm here. You know, I think we need to get ahead of that before somebody else does. Um, yeah, I think the insurance industry performs a very important function in society in the same way as the banking system. You know, nothing gets built without insurance and right. you know, I think it's, it's a lot more intricate than meets the eye. You know, people look at commodity insurance as, as a means by which you can improve distribution. I mean, I think improvements can be made right across the piece. Right. Um, and I think, you know, it's quite interesting if you look at the evolution of technology over the last 20 years with the internet, I mean, our insurance costs have gone up. Um, you know, whereas they should be going down. So there's something fundamentally wrong in our system. Right, I mean, they talk about, depending on who you talk to, you know, 35 to maybe up to 40, 40 cents on the dollar in yeah. distribution, right? Which will leave 60 cents, 65 cents in actually delivering the, the, the product that you're supposed to be delivering. That, that's kind of an interesting model. Yeah, and indeed, and if you look at the captive community in our industry, you know, which is effectively a sharing economy, most of which have been born out of necessity rather than desire, their distribution costs are between five and ten percent. You know, so there are you know enterprises in our industry that do have a very low distribution cost. So I think we need to look to that as a clue as to where we might go to the future. Right. You know, you look at the at the sixty cents, sixty five cents, and you look at the distance between the risk and the risk bearer, mm -hmm. and you go, well, what efficiencies or inefficiencies are there in that, and what's the likelihood that that distance could be shortened? Yeah, well, I, well, I, th I think we see, we, we, we sort of place change in three buckets. Uh, the first bucket is distribution and how we can improve the distribution and delivery cost right. of the product. The second is the product itself and how we can enhance, you know, what we sell to a customer and, 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 and create a better customer experience. And the third bit is system enhancement, you know, digital ledger, blockchain and those things. So I think between those three segments, you know, we're focused on all three from a Willis Ree standpoint. And um, you know, I think if we can get all three right, we'll have a nice fusion of improvement across the industry. But I, I don't see it being in one bucket or another. Right. I think there are three definite areas for improvement. And um, I think if we make progress there, and obviously conferences like this, right. um, will give us some clues to how we go about that. Right. Um, well, I think we'll be fine. There's a number of examples you know, where Willis Ree is kind of out front on that innovation path, right? Yep. I think you're a little more progressive than the average well, company very, in the industry. Very, we try to be, it's very kind of you to say <laughs> right. so. Yeah. And, and the evidence proves itself <clears throat> out, right? But uh, to speak to the, what you perceive as the willingness or the, the acknowledgement of some of the incumbents to the need to innovate. I mean, it's oftentimes some people say they don't, that a lot of the incumbents don't really want to innovate, yep. but they're kind of sort of being forced to. Yep. And you know, it's kind of like, you know, do, do you move because of the, you know, the, 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 the carrot or the, the stick? Yeah. What, what, what motivates your movement? Well, I think this is where we can be very helpful as, as an intermediator and an advisor. You know, you look at the spectrum of insurance companies, um, you know, some of the companies, certainly at the very sharp end of, of the business, the larger enterprises, are very tech savvy and very aware of the need to change. But at the other end of the spectrum is some of the smaller companies, you know, the specialists, and the local companies don't really know where to start. So I think we perform a very important function in creating awareness of what's out there. Right. So if you look at what we're trying to accomplish in the whole ins insure tech spectrum, is to try and find things that will enhance our customer right. experience. You know, so that we can take it to our clients and say, look, you know, we've seen this new product or this new company that we think will have application to your business. Right. So uh, you know, our customers are looking to us to try and help them um, involve themselves in this new wave of change. Right. You know, it's impossible really for some of these company, companies to get in amongst it. And, right. and that's where we bring the value to the table. And obviously, you know, we're, we're helping at the other end of the spectrum, we're helping the companies themselves get going. Right. You know, we've met a number of people, certainly here and, and certainly in the last year or two, that have great ideas, but don't really know how to bring them to the table. Right. 
So what we're trying to do is create an enhancement platform where you know, we can say, you know, within the Willis Towers Watson Group, we've got deep analytics, we've got, you know, rate making capability, we're reserving specialists, we've got cap modelling, we've got geospatial mapping, you know, we can raise your capital, we can buy your reinsurance, we can do all this stuff to move your business from here to here. And that's where we add the value. Right, so you, you mentioned a word a while ago, the integration, right? Yeah. I'm a believer that integration, in order for innovation, to be integrated into a company, not only do you have to, they have to be able to integrate with the company, they got to be integrated with other insure techs, mm -hmm. other innovators, and then the company has to have a, an understanding or an approach, if yeah. you will, on how stuff gets integrated into them so a system can be developed that actually works. Yeah. Um, can you speak to that? Because Will has certainly done that. You've yeah. Done, you've been the, kind of a poster child for that. Well, thank you. Again, it's very kind of you to say so. We tried very hard. Um, I mean, Innovation's a very difficult thing to try and culturally embed. Um, Culture being the big word, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, I come from a private independent background where we never had any clout or muscle, you know, before we sold our business to, to Willis. And yeah, we had to innovate. It was the only way we created opportunity. You know, so I come from a culture of innovation and, you know, I've tried to impose that. Not that Willis weren't cult uh, culturally innovative before I got there, but I've tried to, to enhance that proposition as part of our overall uh, offering to customers, and it seems to have worked pretty well. So, you know, creating a culture of innovation is the first step. Embedding it as something you do as a, as a daily, uh, you know, course is, is, is the other thing. And I think we're getting there with that. You know, um, you know, I'm trying to get everybody to understand in our company that you can't sit on your laurels here. You know, this is a very fast moving world and a very fast changing world, and we need to be on our toes. That's an interesting thing about innovation is that, you know, the status quo never remains the status quo. No, it keeps fine. moving. And the more you innovate, all that happens is the status quo keeps moving. You have to keep innovating. Yeah. There is no arrival. Sure. Right. And, and you know, it's interesting if you look at our market infrastructure. Yeah, you, know, you start from the, the the retail, the consumer itself. Then we have the retail broker, the wholesale broker, the risk taker, the reinsurance broker, the reinsurance underwriter, the retrocessionaire. I mean, that structure's been in place now for decades. Right. You know, and it's gonna, it will change. You know, when we've now got the ILS market moving in. You know, with a very substantial contribution to our industry now, you know, right. and new ideas, different ways of raising money. It's much more fluid capital wise now in our right. business. So we're starting to see some real change from the capital side of the house. And, you know, that capital has no respect for market order. You know, we all believe in market order, but right. these guys say we want to get to the, you know, the fastest route to the premium, the cheapest possible right. way. Exactly. And that's what's going to force the change. You know, so we we either get with the program or we don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. my, my view is we get with the program. It is usually the case that money drives the decisions, right? And so it's yeah. interesting. So just personally, John, you've announced your retirement from yeah. Willis Re as CEO, and I'm pretty sure you have your eye on some things you'd like to do. And maybe you can't speak about the specifics, but can you talk about the things <coughs> you'd like to do? Sure. Um, so I've, you know, I've been in the broking business about 42 years, and I just felt as though, you know, that's enough. Okay. Um, and, and it's time to move on for me, really, because I've got other things within the industry and outside the industry that I'd like to do. Uh, certainly within the industry, I would like to and will do um, uh, create a business that promotes entrepreneurialism. Um, it's been very difficult for, certainly in the London market, where you know, I spent a lot of my career, it's been very difficult for new entrepreneurial startups to get going for a number of reasons, regulation, cost of startup, um, demands on capital. So one thing I'd like to try and do is create a sort of regulatory and compliance umbrella that delivers everything that can, you know, that can, in, that, that can encourage and enable startups to get going, right. you know, as a full turnkey operator. So that definitely interests me. That's um, interesting. But I've had a ball in the broking business, you know, but um, 42 years is a long time in any business. <laughs> I, think well, I've done, I think I've done my bit, you know? Yeah. Well, my, my bet is you learned a little bit in 42 years and well, have a lot of that to so. impart to others. Yeah, you'd hope so. And, and um, you know, I still feel quite young and sprightly, so, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll do some things around. I mean, I think it's very healthy for, you know, CEOs to move on. I mean, I think I've done a long enough stint, you know, in the chair. Um, and I've got some fantastic people that work with me. You know, my successor, James Kent, will just do an outstanding job. So I think it's very healthy. It freshens everything up and, and, and everybody gets a chance to move forward. Yeah, so the next wave of leadership at Willis Re. Yep. What do you expect? If you were to project out there and, and, and you don't have a dog in yeah. the fight, so you can kind of do that objectively, yeah. 
what does Willis Free look like in a year or two down the road? So I think that um, we're on this path already, um, and it's a path of um, uh, more of an advisory broker. You know, so you know, 25 years ago, all we did was transact and advise our clients around you know market average. Yeah, what we've got now is a very sophisticated uh, toolkit of analytics and software products and things like that. So yeah, we've moved more towards an advisory role. So that's number one. Number two, I think we're, we're going to be dealing in multiple different ways with all sorts of different capital. Um, I think there'll be a lot more fluidity in the market. I see the market deepening out into derivatives. You know, at the moment there's no indexation in our market and there's no means by which we can operate through a clearinghouse and, and create more leverage. You know, and I see that happening very soon. And that's going to be driven by data. Does that end up driving a change to the business model? Well, it could do. I Maybe mean, even you, the revenue model. Well, if you look at other um, financial services, you know, you look at commodities, currencies, equities, bonds. Yeah, I mean, exactly. they've all got very deep secondary markets. Mm -hmm. So our market is very shallow. It's just a physical market at the moment. Yeah, we've got a retro market, which is not very deep, and we've got a bit of secondary cap bond trading. But by and large, you know, it, it's a sort of physical market in the same way as a commodity market would be. Right. But, you know, I think we can go much deeper than that. And, you know, I think we can do um, similar things to that which has happened in every, every other financial market. So I see that evolving over time as well. Um, I, think, I think the whole distribution will change, uh, driven largely by some of the people you meet in this conference. Right. Um, you know, so I think, I think we'll, have, we'll have a significant role to play in all that if we are sharp, innovative and on our toes. Uh, and I've got every confidence that you know, the successor leadership team will do that. Yeah, so yeah. one of the couple of things you touched on there that I guess I want to echo is a general respect for the role of insurance yeah. in society and, the, and economies generally. Yeah. I think sometimes technologists, entrepreneurs, they jump into something and, and, and think they can make a, a big difference uh, maybe without the respect they need to have uh -huh. for the regulatory environment, for the the, the necessity of, a, of something like the insurance market. Yeah. Just to move commerce. Sure. Right. Well, nothing flies or floats or gets built without insurance. So exactly. it plays a very sig significant role in society and we need to protect that. Absolutely. But it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean to say that protecting it means we stand still. That's right. You know, I think we need to move it forward and enhance it. And that's right. the trick. Yeah, the most effective um, protection is to move it forward. Yeah. Right. I so mean, it, it's a fantastic thing, insurance. And, and there's a lot more subtlety to it than people give it credit for. Um, and I've never been involved in a claim of any real substance where there hasn't been some technical issue right. around the contract or the contract wasn't explicit about the coverage. And, and that's where things like relationship and syndication and all these other wonderful things we take for granted comes to the fore. Right. Uh, and they're the sort of things we need to protect. So, you know, at, at, at Insurance Thought Leadership Innovators Edge, we talk about this, this notion of what should be. Mm -hmm. Innovation, technology, left to its own devices is agnostic. Yeah. Good, bad, left, right, up, down, it doesn't matter, it just is. Cool. Yeah. It depends on how it's used and how it's implemented, sure. right? And so we try, to the extent that we can, to be a little bit of a voice of purposefulness and, and yeah. what should be, yeah. so that things move into an optimum direction. And, yeah. and um, I sure hope, because of your, who you are and the, the, the impact you have had on the industry and that you're going to have, that you feel the same way. Yeah, I do feel the same way. You know, I've, I've, um, I've been very proud to have been associated with the insurance market. I, I, you know, it's been a fantastic career for me. It's a wonderful community. Right. It's a very tight-knit community, yeah. and, and there's some very decent people in it. Oh, you know, so um, I mean, I look at, you know, comparatively some of the other industries, and, you know, it's a bit more cutthroat and sharp than ours. Right. Um, so I, I take great pleasure in the fact that we live in a decent market right. with decent people doing decent things, you know? And I think these fundamentals are terribly important to keep in mind, you know, as, as we change um, through, through technology, you know, the fundamentals are terribly important. You know, relationships, syndication, yeah. structure. Because by definition, insurance touches every vertical industry on the planet. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a result, we've always thought that insurance was the most perfectly situated leader to affect some of the, most, the world's most difficult challenges. Because they're there already. Yeah. Right, and so and it's just, you know, insurance, I just want to make sure that those in our audience that look at insurance uh, in a way that maybe it, movies or books or yeah. whatever, you need to understand that it's, it's way more complicated, way more important than that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And you mentioned earlier, you know, when we were chatting before that, um, 
you know, Amazon are now showing some interest in, in our industry and, and that's fine, you know, I mean, maybe they'll bring some real change, you know, and, and change for good. Um, but, you know, I, th I think it's terribly important to recognise that the infrastructure that we have functions uh, and it's important that whatever we move to in terms of changes in distribution functions as well, you know, and delivers the same sort of product. Right, at um, least as well. Better. Better. Same, same sort of product, better, yeah. yeah.